Hello everyone and welcome back to this new episode of the Futures Learning series. In this episode I'm going to talk about MAML, this is the acronym of Model Agnostic Meta Learning. And this paper has been introduced in 2017 at uh, ICML. You can find the article on archive, you can find an implementation in TensorFlow made by the first author of the paper on, the, on her GitHub account and uh, I will, in this article, also introduce some uh, pseudocode in uh, PyTorch. You can find easily on GitHub many different implementations. Some of them are quite efficient, so if you want to play around with the algorithm, I suggest you to uh, search it on, on, uh, on GitHub. And I will leave also some um, possible links on the description. So first of all, I would like to start explaining briefly what is meta-learning. First of all, it's important to, to notice that the term meta-learning has been used uh, in, the, in the last decades by different communities with different meanings. So if you read an article, it's quite old, and you find the term meta-learning, they may use this term with a different connotation with respect to uh, the term that we use today. And uh, only recently, probably three or four years ago, this term has, has been uh, consistently used to indicate the learning to learn paradigm. What does it mean learning to learn? Basically, I want to learn a set of meta parameters or a, a learning rule for the learning itself. And uh, we will see uh, later with a specific example in, in MAMAR what does it mean. Uh, one of the first papers uh, is the one of Smidhuber in the uh, in the 80s, and Schmidhuber started to write about meta-learning, especially using evolutionary algorithms and recurrent networks. There's been also other researchers that were investigating the problem uh, uh, in that period, especially there is an interesting article also of Benjo where there is, in this case, a way uh, to learn a learning rule and not a set of meta-parameters. But on, on, the, on this article on Scholarpedia, you can find a nice overview of these different approaches. So let's see some terminology and a comparison with other methods between MAML and Protonet Relation Net, for instance. So first of all, terminology. Uh, MAML uses a slightly different terminology. is uh, often used the term meta-training, meta-testing. But we are always in the same setting, so we have a certain amount of classes, we have our support set, our query set, and remember that we have a task that is made of a support and a query, where the support are a specific amount of labeled data, and the query is also another specific amount of uh, data that can be labeled or not, depending if you are in the training or testing phase. So in the last episode, I introduced ProtoNet Relation Net. We're going to see now how MAML compare with these two methods. So in ProtoNet, you generally have a network parameterized by f of theta, and you are going to pass the support set. We are gonna, you're going to get a certain amount of prototypes here, and uh, then you are using these prototypes on the support set. You are going to compare it in a using a specific Euclidean distance with the query set. And this will give you your uh, estimate, la label estimates of, uh, of the query set. On relation net, we are going to do something similar. Also, in this case, we have our neural network. We'll get a set of average vector on the support set. But then we are going to use a relation module, in this case, on the query set to estimate the labels y. Remember, instead, we have something uh, very different. So remember, we have our neural network, f of theta. But this neural network this time doesn't give a lot of representation. So in both cases here we had a z. We had a Latin space here uh, represented by a z vector, a Latin vector. But here we are doing, we are using the entire network. So we are also we also have a linear layer at the end that is predicting the output, uh, our classes. And what we do then is to use a loss function and to use the gradient information from this loss function to fine tune the neural network on a specific uh, set of support points such that I can predict my query point. And so my y in this case is the prediction on the query set. And as you can see, the two networks have a different color because they represent 
two slightly different networks. Okay, so those are some interesting properties of MAML. First of all, we are not learning an update function or a learning rules like for other methods, but we are directly learning the model parameters. We are doing so to a fully differentiable uh, approach. An interesting property of MAML is this model is agnostic in the sense that the method can be used in a variety of contexts and fusion learning is just a particular case. MAML has also a probabilistic interpretation in terms of Bayesian hierarchical models and we will see something more in uh, some of the video in this series. So I'd like to give you now an overview on the algorithm. So let's suppose that we have our neural network that is parameterized by a set of weights theta and we are in our weight space w and we are moving in this weight space so we want to update the weights of our neural network but what we want to do in future learning is to find a set of weights w that are pretty good to uh, in a way that they can be rapidly adapt towards different solutions. So for instance, if I have three tasks, so if I have a task one, task two, and a task three, I want to be able to move from a specific point theta in the space through a very few gradient steps. I want to move towards another configuration of the weights theta one, theta two, and theta three star such that this new configuration of weights is now well uh, tuned on the task that I want to solve. And I can achieve this moving in the weight space, optimizing at the same time the three losses of three different tasks. So this parameter here in this point of the space, theta, will be a good compromise. It will be a, a generic set of parameters that can be rapidly adapted towards task specifics parameters. In this case, we can say that we want to optimize two losses. The first one is a sort of across tasks loss to, to find theta. And then we want also to find some specific uh, set of parameters. And to do so, we want to optimize another task specific loss. I suppose now that we are in a set where uh, we are in a five way one shot setting as usual, we can identify our support set as a set of pairs x1, t1. So we are in a five way, means that we have five of those pairs in the support set and so those are the five images and five labels that are part of the support set. And then we also have a query set. Now for simplicity, we can just say it's just one image, x1 with is target t1. Okay, and both of them, this represent my task t. Now let's suppose that we have three of these tasks. So we randomly sampled three different tasks in each one of the support set, we will have five different classes of images and a different query. We have to find to which one of the five classes this image query belongs to. This is a standard few shot setting. How we can do so with MAML? Well, suppose that we are considering task, task one, okay? And that our model is parameterized by a model f with parameters theta. So what I'm going to do is to pass to this function my set s1 and as output I will get a specific prediction y1 from my model given the parameters theta, right? Now what I'm going to do it's just uh, to find a way to tune this theta towards a specific set of parameters. 
the specific set of parameters, we can call it theta1. So we want to go from here, we want to go here, and we can do this, this jump. We can do this jump through one step of gradient descent, for instance. So what we are going to do, is we are going to take theta and we're going to apply just one step of gradient descent. Nabla here represents the gradient and we have our loss function, in this case between the uh, we have our y1, our prediction and our targets so let's suppose that we have our uh, support and our prediction. Okay. So we now obtain a specific configuration of weights. So we are right here. And we, we have done this doing a gradient step with a specific step size represented by alpha here in, in the weight space. So we are now in theta one. The set of weight is specifically uh, tuned to solve task one. What we're gonna do now is to use theta one. So we are gonna do another forward pass. And this time we're gonna do this forward pass on using theta one. And we are gonna do this on the query set. We are always in task one. This will give me a specific prediction y1 with a different color in this case to identify that this is the prediction on the query set. This is the prediction to uh, which class my query image may belongs to. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is to do another time a backward pass, but and this time I'm gonna do it on theta. And and I'm gonna do it using the query, the query set. So what's going on here? What, why we did the second step? So this was a first step, right? And this allow us to find a set of parameters theta one. Then with this new set of parameters, I did another forward pass, I got y1. But then my loss have been optimized with a different step size, uh, beta, to optimize the, the original set of parameters theta. So here we are going back to the query set. And now I want to optimize theta such that on the query set, so something that I never saw before, because before I was optimizing on the support set, now I'm optimizing on the query set. I want to do well on this query set, but I want to optimize theta, I don't want to optimize theta one. So I want to find a good combination of theta that allows me to do well on task one in this way. Now, if you're gonna see the chain of operation that I need to arrive to this loss, you will see that first of all, I need to find theta one, and theta one, I can find it through my neural network parameterized by theta, uh, theta one, right? So I have y one is obtained as a consequence of a forward pass in my network parameterized by theta one. And, but to obtain theta one, then I have to go back here. So it's easy to understand that to conclude this chain of operation, I need to go through two gradient steps. So basically I'm taking the gradient of the gradient. Now this operation is, is a way to uh, find a suitable set of parameters based on this specific task specific set of parameters. And this can be easily done both in TensorFlow and PyTorch since both of them allows to keep the gradient um, the graph of the operation that we, we have done until a specific point in time, and then to do a backward pass through all this operation. This generically 
computationally speaking, this is it can be more expensive than a single forward pass and backward pass, but it can be definitely done. And that's basically the trick behind Mammal. I'm going to do two uh, gradient steps. And we have to imagine to repeat this process for all the other tasks and to take an average of the different three different gradients over theta for these three different tasks, such that when I'm going to update theta, this is done on the uh, three different forward and backward paths uh, on both support and query in this case. And this will allow me to, to find a good theta that is uh, across tasks will perform well once fine-tuned. I would like now to give an overview on the algorithm. You will find on the paper different implementation of MAML. Algorithm to give a description of the specific few shot learning uh, setting. And we will see now how the algorithm works. So first of all, we have a distribution over tasks, P of theta. It means basically that we can sample a specific task, uh, T of i, just from our probability distribution over tasks. And we have our two step size hyperparameters, alpha and beta, that are the one that we are going to use in the two uh, loss functions. As you can see here, we have our outer loop represented by this while, and then we have this specific inner loop. And in the other loop, we are going to update theta while in the inner loop, we're going to update theta prime, that is just the task specific loss, in this case, task specific parameters. Now, there are some differences between the code that I'm going to introduce later and the algorithm, but we will see that this is not, in the end, so different. First of all, so let's focus on this inner loss or inner loop. You can see that here we are going to evaluate, first of all, the loss on, on, on the task uh, specific data. And then we are going to estimate the uh, parameters on this specific task, doing a step size with a specific step size alpha, doing uh, moving our weights in this, in this specific direction of the gradient. And this is done, as I told you, on the support set. Now, in this algorithm, there is no distinction between support and query set, but we're going to do this distinction to make our life easier. So while we are talking here about a loop, when there is no loop, in fact, well, actually, we can have an inner loop because we can repeat this process multiple times. So instead of doing just a single step in the specific direction of the task on the support set, we can repeat this step multiple times and we are going to do multiple jumps on our way space. So we are, if we are theta and then we are going the specific direction of theta prime, we can do it with one jump, but then we can do it another time. So we can get another theta prime. This was theta one prime and we will get another estimation of theta, of theta 1. And we, can, we can repeat this multiple times, so moving, in fact, in our weight space multiple times. What's the problem with this approach? Well, the problem is that then you have to do a backward pass over multiple, uh, multiple steps, over multiple gradients, and this is more complicated, much more complicated. So more steps you do and more your graph, your computational graph becomes uh, long and complicated. And every time that you do a step, you are basically have to do a forward pass through the entire network. And we'll see later that this is problematic. So this is our inner loop. For simplicity here, we assume that we are going to do only just one step. But remember that you can do multiple steps here to find your theta, your theta 1 for task 1. Then we have our outer loop. Another loop is done through this while 
over here. And in the other loop, we are going to update our uh, overall meta parameters theta. And this is done through another gradient step with size beta. And remember that this, this is done on the, on, the, uh, on the query set. So no more on the support set, like on the uh, inner loop. But this is done on the query set. All right, so it's time to see some code. This is an implementation in PyTorch. You can find the, uh, the code on the PyTorch meta repository. This is an interesting repository because uh, it gives you some high level uh, API for uh, implementing learning in, in meta learning algorithms. And we're gonna see now how we can translate this algorithm in code. So first of all, what we need is to sample some batches a certain amount of batches from our probability over, uh, over tasks. And we want to sample a batch of tasks in this specific case. So here you will need um, just probably a couple of lines of code to do, to do this. And you can easily do it using this PyTorch method uh, APIs. And then what we do is to iterate over all tasks that we just sampled from P of T. This is done in this for loop. Then next, we are going to, uh, in the algorithm, basically they are sample, sampling k data points, but we don't need to do, to do this operation since we are going to just take the support set. We also take the query set at this stage. This can be done uh, later actually, but you can easily do it, both of them here. So for the moment we are using the support set. We are passing these train inputs to our model. So this is our forward pass in the model and will give us some prediction train logics that uh, this represent our y, okay, our predictions. And then we have the first inner loss. And you can see that we are estimating the inner loss on, the, on this data points D and this represents estimating the inner loss on our support set, okay. We're estimating inner loss with a cross entropy. This is just a standard cross entropy, nothing special on our training logics obtained here and train targets. Then what we have to do is to compute the uh, adapted parameters, the gradient descent. This is done in the algorithm with this line here, line seven. And we can do this uh, in this way in PyTorch. First of all, we are going to estimate the gradients on the inner loss on our model meta parameters. And we want to keep the gradients, the graph, sorry. We want to keep the graph so that later on, on the other loop, our, our graph is kept intact. We, we, are going not, we are not going to reset it, okay? Then we want to define a, a dictionary of params and we are going to iterate here over our model meta parameters. And we are going to take the gradients and what we do here is just is identical to this. We are going to do a gradient step with a certain step size. Okay. Then uh, here in the algorithm line eight, we are going to sample some data points, but actually this in our specific set just rep represent the, represented by the query points that we already have accumulated in line eight of our algorithm. So we don't need to do this. And uh, we have to be careful now here because for all tasks, we are doing this over multiple tasks, okay? So in our case, when we are going to do this in our PyTorch implementation, we have to call, we have to estimate the loss inside the for loop, and we are going to not doing a simple assignment, we are, but we are going to do a sum of all the losses over all the tasks, okay? So since we are doing a sum here, we are accumulating in the outer loss all the possible uh, task specific losses. Why we are accumulating? Because once you go out from this uh, for loop, your outer loss will contain all the possible losses over all the uh, tasks that you, that you add in your for loop. And later on, when we are going to apply your 
backward pass, we are going to apply this backward pass over all the, the loss, task specific losses. So this is an, a, a simple way to do an average over all the possible losses. And once we have done the backward pass, then we are going to apply our optimizer that in our case is just an Adam optimizer with a specific step size. And this is our uh, other loss, you see it's accumulated here, but then the gradient and the forward step is applied out of this for, uh, for loop. All right, so it's going to see some pros and cons of this algorithm. So starting with advantages, this is quite elegant and neat, as you, as, as you saw. This is one of the reasons why there have been many variations of this algorithm, and we will see later in the next episode how this algorithm can be uh, further improved and how people basically use MAML as, a, uh, as inspiration for many other methods. Then it also provides a fully differentiable way to estimate this kind of metaparameters. This is generally done in, in, in ways that are much more complicated, for instance, using a reinforcement learning of genetic algorithms that does, do, do not require a fully differentiable method. But here instead we have a fully differentiable solution that is pretty elegant. This is also agnostic, meaning that we can use it and adapt it to different tasks, such as classification, regression, reinforcement learning. If you give a look to the article, you will find uh, these different applications. Uh, we also have some drawbacks. So, uh, for instance, the algorithm is quite unstable because uh, it's quite hard to train and they, uh, having an efficient implementation is quite difficult. And if, if you naively uh, going to implement this algorithm, probably you will get you will have some problems. So I suggest you to use some efficient implementation to do so, otherwise your training will be quite slow. This is mainly due to the fact that we have an inner and outer loop to take into account, and that there is also uh, an average over more tasks. So we have a batch of tasks, and um, while many other methods just require one task to do the job. Another problem is that high order derivatives, they are generally quite expensive to compute. This means that we have longer training time. Then if you want to use deep backbones, then we will have some problems because every time that you do an inner step, you're basically uh, increasing your uh, computational graph. And when you have to do the backward pass through this uh, very long um, graph, this will be quite expensive and may lead to a few problems, like the vanishing gradient problem, for instance, if you do multiple inner steps. Okay, I hope that I give you, in this video, a nice overview and a good overview over MAML. And uh, in the next episode, we are going to see how MAML has been improved. And we are going to see also how it's possible to build on top of MAML to do many other applications. So thank you for watching.